God, I love YouTube. We're following these, uh, watching these, these uh, clips, right? This is typo negative. Remember typo negative? This is when they called themselves uh, Repulsion. Back in 1990, Peter Steele, the bass player, dead. Dead. He wanted to kill himself. Right? He wanted to die of suicide and fucking shit. Killed himself. Well, Pete Steele, he used to work for the Parks Department. I think he was a... Actually, I'm sorry. I think he was a mailman. He was a, uh, a mailman. This is one more, man. Club I used to hang out. In. God, such memories, such memories, man. So talk about Covifi. Covifi, Trump's Covifi. Was it coffee or Covifi? A little, uh, a little revelation has evolved. Uh, Trump's twit, Twitter, has evolved. Has uh, he's given a little more, uh, a little more info. Actually, it involves a racehorse. We'll take a look at that. 900 city inmates may be freed if you, uh, the bail, uh, city bail in New York is being reformed. And uh, I don't know I have always said that um, one should be innocent until proven guilty. But uh, in these days and age, this day and age, if you don't have enough money to bail yourself out, you sit in jail and you rot. Uh, so, and the largest, the world's, so to the Green New Deal people, the largest IPO in the world, the largest IPO in the IPO, initial public offering in the world, two trillion dollars worth of stock is about to hit the market to pump out Saudi oil, Aramco, Aramco, huh? So, so uh, let's take a look at some stuff. First, look at some memes. Some memes. Everybody's wondering where the hell is, where the hell is Elizabeth Warren getting all all her ideas? That is fucking. Out of nowhere, she comes up with this Medicare for all plan. She's got all the, she's she's got all our T's, you know, dot eyes dotted, T's crossed, right? She's got she figured out how we're gonna pay for, for uh, Medicare for all, and it looks like it looks like we found out where she's getting her, uh, getting her answers from. So, well, this one right here, I like this one. Right? No, Mama, DNC can't change. DNC can change. Sorry, start again. No, Mama, the DNC can change. It's different this time. <laughs> that is it different this time? Is the DNC, uh, you know, uh, able to change their horrific cheating ways? I don't know, man. It's fucking just dope, man. She got a chick got a beaten. So, uh, so again, bail, right? You know, when you get, you know, you do something wrong or you allegedly did something wrong. And you get locked up in jail, and then there's bail, bail, thousand dollars, five thousand dollars. I'm gonna five thousand dollars. How am I gonna get out? Right? So the jails, especially city jails like Rikers Island, which they're about to close, or will close in five years, according to Mayor Bill De Blasio, are reforming the uh, bail law, and it'll take effect January 1st. Meaning that if people are locked up and being held uh, against their will. Right? Because they're still innocent until proven guilty. Until a judge bangs the gavel on the table and says, pow, you're guilty, and issues a sentence, you're innocent. Right? And if you're poor, you sit there and rot. So, um, I don't know, it's getting some criticism from people who disagree. Let's read. Nearly 900 city jailbirds could be celebrating Christmas early, uh, courtesy of Governor Andrew Cuomo, and a plan to quietly free them before the state's bail reform law goes into effect next year, the Post has learned. And if that weren't enough for a gift, enough if that weren't enough of a gift, de Blasio is promising to follow up with even more presents for the lucky accused criminals by giving them free basketball tickets, movie passes, and gift cards to encourage them to return to court. Sources have told, uh, familiar with the program said. Now, this is, a, again, I'm reading from the New York Post. It's a right-leaning publication. Uh, but nonetheless, the law itself, I believe, is a good one. You're literally rewarding them to commit a crime for committing crimes. I, I, disagree, I fundamentally disagree with that. Innocent until proven guilty, right? Why don't we lock up the, why don't we weigh the crime? How about this? We'll weigh the crime. Right, so when you when a bank rips off fifty billion dollars from a foreign country, or 
or rips off consumers for $25 million a year by raising the, uh, the amount you know, that they charge one cents per customer and rips off millions and millions of dollars, why don't we, why don't we lock those people up? They, they're ripping us off for millions and millions of dollars, but a guy who jumps over the turnstile sits in jail for, for uh, 30 days because he can't make $250 bail or someone who smokes pot or some other minor nuisance. Right? Makes sense, right? right? Make the crime. Right? So the, the proposed early bail release is tied to a law that Cuomo signed in the spring to eliminate bail for defendants charged with an array of misdemeanor and felony charges. The more than 400 offenses include such heinous acts as criminal negligent homicide. I, I don't know if I believe all this, but uh, someone, someone uh, uh, accused of homicide, aggravated assault on a child under 11, and selling drugs on or near school grounds, according to a memo being circulated by prosecutors across the state and obtained by the Post. Well, um, I don't know. I mean, you'd have to look at it. Nonetheless... No bail uh, for people with uh, who are not convicted. And bail is it's it's technically unconstitutional. So, so uh, in the Big Apple, court officials estimate that 880 prisoners, about 16 percent of all pretrial detainees housed by the Department of Corrections, will be eligible for the get out of jail free card. Hmm. Definitely a story we want to follow because uh, because if they do that in New York City, they're going to do it. It'll probably spark a national uh, a national movement to to de-escalate the amount of uh, people in jails, right? Decrease the the indu- military the the uh, jail industrial complex, right? Decrease it, right? So uh, let's talk about this. So Saudi Arabia, you heard of them, right? They have uh, oil, right? Saudi Arabia has a lot of oil, right? And so, you know, if you're, if you're into the Green New Deal, right? Green New Deal, we want a Green New Deal. We want, to, uh, we want to tell the we want to shake our angry finger at the big oil companies and say, stop burning oil and, and, and go for solar and wind and, and, uh, and thermodynamic, right? But big oil keeps doing whatever the hell they're going to do anyway, right? So you wonder how many shares of this IPO is Donald Trump going to get, right? Trump has got all his shit over there, right? You know, fucking loves the Saudis, right? He was supposed to call off the war in Yemen, uh, right? Because the Saudis are funding this this terrible war in Yemen, killing all the Yemen people. And the United States Congress got together and said, okay, let's end the war. And, veto- and uh, Trump vetoed the bill to end the war, and sold the Saudis $800 million in, in weapons. Right? How many millions of dollars in weapons? I think it was billions, actually. I don't even know. But a lot of fucking weapons went to Saudi Arabia. And they don't even, they don't shoot the weapons. The Saudis, they don't fucking know what they're doing. They have no idea how to shoot a gun. Right? They just give it to the, they give it to the fucking, the, the, the rebels down in Saudi Arabia. And, and the rebels do the shooting for the rich Saudis. Right? It's fucking, that's how it works. So, so anyway... What does that have to do with the story? So Saudi Arabia, two, listen to this shit, $2 trillion IPO will be the largest IPO in the world. Now, you thought maybe that should be for, I don't know, maybe for education, maybe for, uh, for green energy, for, for something positive in the world. No, they're selling their fucking oil on the open market in the form of an IPO on their markets. Let's find out. As the global IPO market falters, <laughs> Saudi Arabia oil giant Aramco announced Sunday its IPO offering on the Tadawi uh, exchange in Riyadh, Riyadh, in Tadawiya. So they're, they're doing it on their own um, stock exchange. Saudi Crown, <laughs> Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, bin Salman. Uh, and uh, Aramco executives are scrambling to IPO Aramco before the IPO market shuts and the global economy enters a trade recession. Mm. They're trying to cash in. It makes you wonder, right? It makes you wonder how much of this, how big a slice is Trump and his cronies going to get on this Aramco IPO? It's just, uh, I would bet quite a bit. I would bet a nice slice of that IPO goes right into Trump's pocket. 
just a speculation. I, I'm just speculating. I'm just speculating. That's all. The Aramco IPO has had nearly four years of delays, but could start trading on the Talababa exchange by December with the international offering in 2020 and 2021. Wow. So all these trillions of dollars in terms of an IPO. Watch out. Watch watch the Saudi money flow into Trump's campaign. Fucking millions of dollars is just going to flow in to get Trump reelected. Fucking, they got to do it, man. They got to do it. Right? Gotta do it. What does it have to do with Trump? I don't know, because Trump's a big oil guy. I'm just reaching, right? I'm just reaching. I'm blaming Trump for the Saudi IPO. So what else do we know about this? The price range of the Saudi IPO, it's huge because... It, it this had the market capitalization of this thing is trillions, two trillion dollar IPO to suck the oil out of Saudi Arabia's ground. Now it doesn't mean that, in my view, that uh, Saudi is going to give up any of their uh, executive power over their corporation. They're going to rule it like Saudi Arabia. Uh, so anything that is any any human rights violations that Saudi Arabia is involved in, just buy some IPO, man, and you'll just keep it going, man. Right? Fucking chop off heads, responsible for 9-11, uh, Saudi princes, man. It's just, you know, women get in the back of the room, drive, you know, they fucking, you drive, you chop your head off. So, so anyway, you look at the, uh, you, you talk about $2 trillion. Here's the, here's the dollar value in terms of um, uh, billions I believe it's billions. I don't even know what I'm talking about. What the hell am I talking about? Anyway, just uh, we'll be we'll be watching for that that big IPO, man. Saudi Arabia, man. Prince is going to make some coin on this motherfucker. Uh, so let's look at uh, Trump. <clears throat> now a, the the big story. Now Trump says Covifi might have deep meaning. <laughs> he said it when it happened, didn't he? Say that um, his remember his press secretary uh, Spitzer. Splitzer, whatever his name is, the uh, the pre- the executive, the press secretary at the time said, "No, no, no, Trump doesn't make mistakes." I, everybody thought he was typing coffee, and instead he tweeted out "Cov Fifi," so it might have a deeper meaning. Check this shit out, man. You're not gonna believe this shit, man. And down the stretch comes "Cov Fifi," a thoroughbred named after T- President Trump's co co-founding neologism that stumped the internet, came home a winner Saturday at the Breeders' Cup at the Santa uh, Antia Park in South Carolina. There's a fucking horse named Covifi. A horse named Covifi won a Breeders' Cup uh, event at Santa Antony, Antony, Anita, Anita. (laughs) I should take a fucking reading lesson today. Named after President uh, uh, Trump's famous mistweet, she has now, she, ooh, it's a she, the horse is a she, has, has now won six of her eight races, according to a tweet from the Daily Caller. Great, but how do, do, you, <laughs> but how do you know it was a mistweet, Trump tweeted. Maybe something deeper meaning in a cryptic response Monday morning. Where's the tweet? Oh, here it is. Great, but how do you know it was a mistweet? Maybe something deeper meaning. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Fucking yeah, right. Trump. Trump's full of shit, man. This shit's no deep meaning. That was he was trying to print. He was trying to say coffee. He got busted and he tweeted, and, uh, and I said, "Well, it is, right? Isn't it? Isn't it? Or it's got CIA meaning? The deep state. The deep state. Covifi meaning. You remember that one?" What does it mean? Let's ask. Q had a Q. Remember Q? Ah, Q. 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 Where? Where's Q? Q's been gone for like three months. You heard? <laughs> I hope it was nothing I said. Trying to, trying to bring out the murders that uh, Q may have been involved in. Sorry, Q. Sorry, you know, man. Truth first, right? Truth. Gotta have the truth. So three-year-old Philly won the one million Philly and Mar sprint by three quarters of a length under jockey Joel Rosario. I don't know what what the horse has to do with the story, but let's let's just continue and find out. Maybe there is a hidden meaning. Maybe it's a hidden meaning that I'm too ignorant to understand or see, and that's why I broadcast it to you so you can help me figure what the hell's going on. Despite the constant negative 
constant negative press, Kovifi, he posted the tweet, which he later deleted hours later. He asked his followers, quote, who can figure out the true meaning of Kovifi? That's Trump tweeting. Then White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer, that's his name, not Spitzer, Sean Spicer did not admit that Kovifi uh, was a typo when asked by reporters. The president and a small group of people know exactly what the tweet meant. He said with a straight face, prompting laughter from the press corps. So it's still open, right? What does it mean? Did we Have we decoded Kovifi? I don't know. A horse is cashing in on it. Jamie Roth, who runs the N the LNJ Foxwood stable, decided to harness all the attention on the strange word to name the horse she co-owns. Quote, we gave the name gave gave the name to her because we thought she was special and we thought the name was kind of funny. Kovifi even has her own Twitter account. <laughs> Real Kovifi Racehorse. Hmm, go check it out. The greatest, the greatest Kovifi, hashtag Kovifi hunt in American history, the account tweeted uh, Thursday, poking fun at Trump's off-repeated <laughs> off witch hunt labeled for the impeachment inquiry. Mm. He's not from uh, Roth, whose horse has won five of her seven races, told USA Today that she hasn't heard from the White House and tries, to get, uh, and tries not to get too political. Ah, uh, they're just using the name. He's not for me, <clears throat> but obviously he is for some other people, she said of Trump. Mm. She doesn't even like Trump. He just doesn't stand for the things that I believe, I believe, I believe in. I think they want to say believe in. But I believe in Kovifi. I, I believe in Kovifi. Do you believe in Kovifi? Wow. What a story, man. Fucking Trump, man. Whatever he does, even the mistakes, man, that's fame. That's what fame looks like, man. That's what fucking fame looks like. You could take a piss in the street and people will say, you know, because you're famous, people will look and say, look, no, 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 look at the puddle of piss and there's an encrypted message. There's an encrypted message inside the piss, man. You just got, you can't see it because you're fucking ignorant. You ignorant, man. Oh!